Hello and welcome to Ketterk Farms. We're back with another episode of Edgewater, Saskatchewan. And I have been away for uh, about a week here, so we're going to be trying to figure out what's going on today. I've apparently left the game with the Trident all uh, switched over here to our dry box uh, spreader with a full load of lime all ready to go. So I suspect that we're going to be taking this out to our newly acquired field here and spreading a little bit of lime today. Uh, last episode, we did a lot of uh, cleanup with our fields there. We kind of removed some of the trees, moved some of the field lines around to make things a little bit easier to leverage course play and hired workers in general. And today, I think we just got to finish off the last of the fall activities here. We don't have a lot of work left to do. In fact, I want to say this lime spreading is probably the last of what we've got to do out here. So I'm going to be going ahead and tackling this real quick. We're probably going to need to bring a little bit more lime out here at some point, though. I don't know how far one box is going to get us, and this is a decent size field. So let's go ahead and jump into this. I think I'm going to just take the headlands off first here and see where we end up. Yeah, we're uh, ripping through this pretty quick, but you can see in the mini map there that this field needed a fair amount of uh, pH boost here. We have just acquired this field, and so every time you get a new field, you've got to do a little bit of work to get it in line with what you want for all of your nutrients here. I haven't decided yet what crop we're going to be planting back into this field though. So I'm not yet sure if we need any uh, nitrogen in here or if we're going to be planting something that's going to put some nitrogen back into the soil. We've got plenty of uh, options for that though. I don't think we're going to be leveraging the dry spreader for that. I think we'll probably just put in a fair amount with the drill when the time comes. I think that's my plan at least and uh, I always forget just how wide of a pattern this lime spreader does with the dry box here we can really throw this uh, out there to the edges of the field I'm trying to make sure we don't miss a bunch of uh, spots on the edges but I'm beginning to wonder if we're even gonna make it all the way around this field before we run out of lime so we're definitely gonna need at least one refill if not a couple of refills I'm trying to think about the best way to do that. We can obviously uh, run the semi uh, up to the store and uh, or up to the co-op, I should say, and get a little bit more lime. I'm just curious how I'm going to get that back out of the semi and into the lime spreader. I suppose we've got that nice drive over auger now so I can get it out of the semi a little bit easier. And uh, yeah, we might have to do that because we are officially out of lime. And looking at the size of this field, we're going to need a few more uh, boxes here to finish this off. So let me drive this back up to the edge of the field at least here. And we'll run out and grab the semi and head on up to the co-op. All right, we're up here at the co-op and I'm going to try and I bring back, I should have disconnected this trailer. I'm only going to bring back the front hopper full of lime. I think that's going to be more than enough. And I'm going out on a limb here, assuming that I'm going to be able to get this back out of here at some point. So it's a whole, uh, all a guess. I remember last time we did this, we had a lot of problems. But I think I can uh, get this out of here with this new drive over auger. So that's what we're going to try. I'm wishing I could remember how much the uh, hopper box on the Trident held before we got started there. I just can't quite remember how much uh, was in there. Because I know I'm going to need at least a couple of boxes full. Um, let me see if I can figure that out real quick. A quick look back tells me that I had 24 in the box before so this is actually just over one box not quite two boxes yet so we're gonna we're gonna go all out i'm gonna see if i can fill up both hoppers here and not have regrets 
you never know. It might be a bit too much. But, oh, we ran out of money. You know what? That's probably a good place to stop. Or he'll, uh, we'll go with that. This is a little over two boxes. And if we need more, I can always run back up here, I suppose, with the semi and get some more. But we're going to, uh, we're going to run with this and see how far he gets us. Let's see if I can remember how to get back out of the yard here. The co-op's got quite the interesting uh, yard layout here. It keeps me on my toes. All right, I've got back up here to the field. We've got a little bit of traffic coming our way. So hopefully I can uh, jump across the road here. There we go. And I'm going to get this thing pulled in over here. And then I'm going to have to go bring the auger out here, I think, uh, in order to unload into this thing so we're gonna leave the uh, truck sitting right here and I'm gonna run back over here to the farm and grab the truck and bring the auger and the drive over uh, over to the field here I think all right well apparently my pickup truck is no more I recently installed an updated version of it and uh, apparently I'm getting some errors in my log I think because I had options that are no longer available on that uh, particular truck and how that I've updated it. And so I'm going to have to figure out what I did to, uh, to my pickup so that it'll load back into the game. However, we've gone ahead and just uh, brought this auger over here through, I'll say, other means. And we're going to keep moving forward here with the episode. Not uh, quite in the mood to troubleshoot uh, mod issues today. And hopefully this thing is going to work out with the drive over. I've never used these two in this particular combination. So I'm going to toss that in there. And our first step is going to be to actually drive over the uh, drive over and make sure I can dump lime in here to begin with. And if this works, we'll be golden. Oh, there we are. Awesome. I'm loving it. So I'm going to go ahead and get that filling up. It looks like that's overloading into the auger just fine. And then I'm going to grab our spreader here. And we'll see if I can get this guy filling up now. Uh, I'm going to just swing all the way around because I'm so far out of position. I have to say, this thing does actually uh, turn quite far with these big floaters on. There we go. It works like a charm. So let's see if I can get all topped back off here and we'll go finish out that headland pass real quick. Oh, we've stopped unloading, I'm guessing, because the semi rolled forward or it just got a little bit full here. I think it probably stopped unloading into the augers because uh, the augers got full before I got the spreader into place there. So the augers have a bit of a capacity and it's uh, getting those all topped off here. So at least when I get back up onto this end, we'll have a, uh, uh, a bit to start uh, unloading into the box before I have to get the truck unloading again. In fact, just driving under it, it tried to unload another time here on the go. Not sure unloading on the go is really something you want to do with the uh, lime spreader here, though. Although with how fast it's consuming the lime, we might actually enjoy having a uh, grain cart or something running next to us with lime in it. If we were not uh, opposed to breaking down our realism, we could keep this thing going for quite some time. Now, I wish I had set up a GPS track on this, but we're going to just flip around here and worry about it on the way back down now. We've got all these nice up and down rows to tackle here. There we go. And if I remember correctly, I can bring it up here, do this, and do that because I think I'm going nope I need to go 90 uh, let's try that again set 90 
There it is. Looking good. We're uh, overlapping over there. We're not losing any bits. This should work out quite nicely for us. And as long as I'm down here on the end by the semi, I think I'm going to go ahead and refill my hopper here. Even though we've still got about half of the hopper left. No sense in uh, heading down to the other end of the field empty. And having to run all the way back down here. And if I can just find the appropriate track here, I think we should be good. Looking good, looking good. All right, well, this is going to make a short work of the rest of this field now. And I do have to apologize if I'm a little bit low energy here today. I am still getting over this uh, cold. I've been going on uh, six weeks now with a uh, sinus infection here. So my voice hasn't quite popped back yet. It's a little bit uh, rough here today. And we're still feeling just a bit under the weather, but I feel like we're uh, we're getting there and we're on the road to recovery here. And I'm excited to be jumping back into some videos. We've got a, a lot left we want to do on this farm here. And I don't want to lose our momentum. We're finally starting to expand the size of the farm and expand our equipment footprint quite a bit. So I want to keep uh, keep pushing on this and see what else we can do to get some new stuff going here on the farm. Now, we did take out a, a sizable loan, I think, to get into this field and all of our equipment. So we are, uh, we are running a little bit behind on the cash. However, uh, we should have quite a bit to sell over the winter here if I pop open the menu. Uh, I've got the time-saving stock check mod on here. January, February, we've got um, our max values over here for our wheat and canola. We're going to be able to get sold over the winter here. So that should be, you know, a good 230-ish thousand dollars available for us. And uh, like I said, we do have a sizable loan out right now. But uh, $230,000 is going to go a long way towards giving us some capital to jump into some more things. We may end up uh, getting some more upgrades here as we get into the spring. We'll see. I do have the giant uh, Borgo Cedar and uh, that new Delta track that we decided to hang on to after last spring. So that's going to uh, really make our spring planting go so much quicker. And then we'll just have to uh, look at what we're going to need as we get into fall. I really think that's where we're going to start spending some money and see if we can upgrade our uh, combining uh, operations here a bit. I know a lot of people keep asking why I'm bothering to swap their crops, and it is because we're getting a 20% yield bonus, which is pretty substantial. Uh, so I feel like that does uh, make up for the extra time and fuel that we're spending uh, running through the fields with a swather. And while that's loading up, let's jump in here. We need to start the semi unloading here. I've got most of that front hopper, all that front hopper is empty now. Let's see if we can pull on up here and unload the rear hopper now. I think I'll get all this rear hopper out. Yep, there we go. And I think the box will probably get full. Let me turn the semi off, actually. No sense leaving it running. It is empty now. I think the box is probably full. Oh, not quite even. So we've got just the right amount of lime here to get through this entire field with only a little bit left in the hopper here. So that'll work out pretty good for us. Uh, no sense wasting uh, any extra trips up to the co-op or anything. We'll have uh, enough to finish this out. In fact, we'll have a little bit too much. We've got less than a pass left over here. That's all right, though. It's hard to estimate uh, stuff like this to be too exact. And so I'm actually quite impressed with myself that we got it down to uh, within a hopper of what we needed for the field. That's a uh, pretty good estimate in my mind. And we'll just hang on to the rest of this, or maybe I'll even just spread out the rest of this on one of our other fields here to get rid of it. And it's not like it's going to go to waste. It'll only spread the amount that we need with the precision farming uh, tools here on the uh, save. 
but since we're done here I'm gonna go ahead and run this back up towards the farm here I believe and I think for today we're gonna go ahead and just leave what we've got in the hopper for now I don't need uh, to put anything else into this hopper and we'll just go ahead and back this right back into the shop here I want to make sure we keep this lime dry until we figure out what we're gonna do with it if anything uh, I took a look at our fields. We really don't need to spread anything on the other fields, so we might just leave that in there until uh, until we're ready in the next fall season here. I think we'll need to put another pass of pH on all of these uh, fields on this side of the farm. So let's go ahead and get the rest of this equipment and brought back up to the farmyard here. And I think we're going to finally be ready to start ticking the clock forward a bit here towards the January and February timelines and get some of our crops sold off. All right, I've got all of the augers and everything brought back up here. I think we're gonna leave the semi over here where we typically do and get everything all closed up here for the winter. Uh, actually, we might, uh, we might need the snow blower, but we're gonna worry about that when the time comes here. I'm not overly uh, concerned at the moment. We will most definitely get snow on this map, though. I don't think I've uh, played through a winter where we didn't get buried in snow. And so just to make sure we're ready for that, I'm going to have all the doors closed up. I think everything's got appropriate snow masks on it, though. I'm not too worried about it, but, you know, you don't want any snow blowing into the shop. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, close down September here we're gonna start ticking the time forward and we'll catch up with you guys in winter and I man I really can't wait to try and pull the crops out of this bag and see how that goes I've just been uh, really thinking about that uh, since we filled it up but the peas aren't ready to go until this summer in fact all we've got is the canola which is 91,000 liters and the wheat here to go we'll catch back up with you here in january to offload this wheat and i've decided we're not going to plant any more wheat i don't think uh the wheat is capable of being a winter crop here i just i didn't feel it it's not worth nearly as much per acre as some of the other crops so i'm going to stick to some of our other crops here and we're going to make a push for some profits in the next year all right we'll catch you in january all right well we are continuing to move our time forward here i like to slow things down every day for just a little bit to make sure that uh farm sim can keep up with us as we uh, keep moving forward and we've got a lovely rainy november here so i decided we'd uh take a pause and go ahead and just get the snowblower all hooked up i'm sure we're gonna need it at some point over the winter here and so yeah we've got it all hooked up and no problems whatsoever and i'm all ready for this snow so we'll uh keep moving the uh old clock forward here and catch you all in january all right so as the uh, snow starts to come in here we don't have a lot of it yet but i've come to the realization i could start running my crops up to the elevator here before we get into the January time frame uh, because we are going to load things out on the train and so I'm going to go ahead and get at least our wheat uh, hauled up here before the yard gets completely buried if we get any more snow we're definitely going to be out here cleaning out the yard and I'd love to uh, not struggle out here I think the roads are all cleared at least but uh you know, we've got a long way to go and several loads to bring up there. So I figured, eh, let's get a head start on this. And actually, while that's loading, just checking in here, we're right up on what the uh, max value is here. Uh, we could actually run a train up there for the wheat just now. Although I'm beginning to wonder if I'm going to get into a situation where I could get the uh, wheat and the canola price to come up. The canola price is coming up here. We're getting close to the max value. We may let the wheat sit for a bit and see how that price continues to do as we get a little bit further on here into January and see that canola price come up. If I switch over here and look at my price fluctuations, 
Oh yeah, canola is pretty well flat across uh, November. I mean, it kind of has a little up and down here through November, December, January, February, where wheat is going to start dropping pretty fast here in January. Um, and canola is going to come up in January. So yeah, we might be able to find a sweet spot here in January where I can get both of these uh, prices up and sold. I always forget that the train price is the best price and uh, that's what we're looking at on that price fluctuation chart and it does cost a little bit of money to lease the train not a lot but uh, if I can send all of our crops up in a single train ride that little bit of savings may uh, balance out against uh, you know any uh, loss we're gonna take on this wheat honestly the wheat isn't worth that much money and I'm gonna get this uh, pulled out here. Looks like we lost the stop sign there. And once I'm on the road, I think I can just send this guy right on up to the, do I have a uh, train station? I do not have a train station uh, auto drive point apparently. I really should. I know there's some uh, auto drive courses out there. People keep telling me I could just uh, download um, I always like creating my own courses for some reason though, but uh, I think it's this grain pool east where I can offload for the train. So I might need to uh, go ahead and get that set up here. All right, I'm up here at the yard. We're gonna see if I can figure out the best place to lay this out now. I think what I'd want to do for the train waypoint is grab right off of this if I can get onto the right one and I need to swing nice and wide with this big truck and trailer yeah that didn't quite work out we lost the ability to turn on the uh, ramp here oh my goodness we've made a total mess well, let's go ahead and delete that yeah, this is just a uh, total mess, so I'm going to go ahead and delete these courses. Oh, I can't see I'm in the building. And we'll worry about that uh, some other time here. Let me go ahead and just unload this wheat right into the uh, train station here. I wish I could uh, see the auto drive courses when I wasn't in a vehicle. I could uh, come in here and uh, set something up by hand, but... Alas, not so much. Get this back hopper all unloaded real quick. There we go. And let's make sure that I didn't completely destroy our course. I did. I was uh, deleting points, just clicking at random, and it looks like I started to delete a whole other course's uh, waypoints over here. My bad, my bad. And somehow I've got all these weird points over here that I need to get rid of now. So we'll go ahead and try and clean this up. I can hold the left alt and click on these to delete them. There we go. Not too shabby. All right, let's drive back up to the farm. Let's get the uh, rest of our wheat and uh, maybe even start hauling the canola up here real quick. And we'll worry about all this at a later point in time. Yeah, the driveway is uh, not quite clear. We're able to get through, but the snow did start piling up here. We probably could have used to get out here with the uh, snow blower, but we're gonna we're gonna take our chances here. It's only a few inches, and now that we've got a track, it's not that bad actually. All right, so first things first, let's get the front hopper filled up here a bit. Actually, I should have put that in the back hopper. The back hopper's a little smaller. Ah, uh, well. We've got a whole 212 bushels there. And then I need to get some canola moving. So let's go ahead and grab this auger and see if we can get this spun around. All right, it took a little finagling but I've got that auger set up underneath the canola. And I'll let me go ahead and lower it back down a bit here so that we're not so far away from the semi-trailer. And I should be able to start unloading the canola here. Now, I'm hoping that uh, once I get the canola 
into this back trailer that we're only going to need to make one more semi-load here. It's going to be close. I think we might have a little bit more than a one semi-load. If I uh, put the canola in the front hopper and the wheat in the back, I think we would have just made it. But I did not think that through very well. So we're going to run with what we've got and we'll see how it all shakes out. In a second run up here, let's see if we're not trying to record an auto drive course, if I can get this in here without uh, problems. It's a little bit tricky on the ramp here. The front wheels just come off of the ground uh, in a certain spot, so you've got to kind of get a running start at it, I guess, and be heading in the right direction as you get up to the top of the ramp. There we go. We've got all of the wheat up here now, and we're getting the canola unloaded. There we go, looking good. One more load of canola here, I think. Maybe two, we'll see, we'll see. Off to the farm we go. We're gonna mix it up this time and head to the left and load up first this way. I don't know why, that's just uh, the whim of the moment. 66,000 liters, I don't think we're gonna get it all into the uh, semi here. I don't think we're gonna get it. There we go. First topper is 850 bushel. Not too bad. And the back hopper is a less than that. So I know we're not going to get the uh, canola all out in this trip. That's all right. We'll have to make just a one more uh, load here. We won't need both trailers, but I'll probably be too lazy to disconnect the pump trailer here. So we'll just run with it. And there we go, all filled up. Let's get all tarped up. Oh. There we go. Sometimes the tarp key gets a little uh, wonky there, but we've got it all tarped up now. And see if we can pull our way out through the snow on this side. I was actually expecting the snow to pick back up here today and that we'd still have to dig ourselves out, but call me lazy we're trying to get everything out before the heavy snow comes in after having done the snow removal a few times i'll be honest it's a, not my favorite job on the farm we're starting to put uh, quite the ruts in the uh, yard up here at the co-op look at all the times we've been through here we might as well continue our uh, backwards uh, mentality here we're going to make the attempt to swing into this from the backside this time and see how that goes. As an auto drive course, this may be the better play in the future. We'll have to think that through. Get this unloaded. Oh, there's a drive through into that other silo building there. That might actually be a little bit easier. I feel like at some point I knew this and I might have forgotten about it. I don't know, but I'm going to pull forward here. We're going to get the other trailer all unloaded and I'm going to pull straight through into that building and see what it's like. There we go. All emptied out and that would solve our problems with having to turn on the ramp. And we've got a pretty wide area out here. Yeah, this wouldn't be too bad. I wonder if I could come in this way easily or not. That's uh, something to test here, I guess, on our final run of canola. So I'll get up here to the farm. We'll get all loaded up and we'll try and come that way from the entrance this time and see how we do. Now, since we want to uh, just kind of test driving through the, from the other side here with the full semi setup, I'm not going to bother disconnecting the pup trailer. We're going to call it intentional for testing purposes, even though uh, we're probably just lazy. Either way, let's uh, go ahead and get this uh, back up here to the co-op and we'll check back in with you. All right, so let's see here. I might need to swing a little wide here just so I can work the trailer around that side and then back into this side. Looking good. Whoa, the snow's getting a little bit of me here. That's all right. And then I can swing right back in like so. And yeah, that's going to be a straight shot right on in here. That's not too bad at all. We could uh, definitely auto drive that. 
Now, let's go ahead and get the last of this canola dropped off here. Excited to be done hauling. We hauled a lot of grain today. I wasn't expecting necessarily to do all of this when I sat down. I wasn't actually sure what we had left to do on the farm uh, in the fall slash winter here. So I'm excited that we got all the grain hauled. Now we just got to watch that market a little bit and see if there's a sweet spot in January here where we can sell both our wheat and our canola. So I'm going to go ahead and just get the semi brought back up to the yard here and then we'll uh, pop open the market window and we'll keep a watch as we move through January here. So we're moving through January here. It looks like our canola price is coming up pretty quick. Our wheat price is kind of holding on. In fact, it's trending up right now. So we're going to keep moving. We're already uh, most of the way through January 1. I've got this on two week uh, or two day uh, months right now. So I'm going to just keep my eye on this and we're going to keep moving it forward. I think I can rent a train any time, day or night. So I'm just hanging out here next to the train waiting to see this canola price uh, kind of top out, to be honest. Uh, as long as the wheat price here stays somewhere north of 60, I think it's going to be worth it to let the canola price keep going up here. So we're going to keep going. The train just went through, so I know it's going to be a minute to wait for it whenever it is ready. And man, we are in a lot of debt. $48,000 of uh, debt since uh, we started the episode here in September. We've been uh, just taking on uh, little bits here every day we pass through. That's all right. It's all part of the plan. And our wheat is still ticking up a little bit here. We did lose out. We could have been way up at the top end there. It looks like canola's way above max value though. So oh, there we are. I'm going to slow down time. We hit the peak. And we're $2,000 over here. We were at uh, 65 or so here. So I'd rather get the max for my canola than uh, worry about uh, the little bit we're going to lose out on the wheat. I'm going to rent the train. And it says train is going to arrive soon. 1.4 kilometers. All right. Well, we're just going to sit here and uh, wait around for the train to show up and get this uh, get this party going with selling off some grain. All right, it looks like it's coming. We're at 400 meters and closing rapidly. I don't see it yet, but the crossroads are coming down. Oh, it's coming backwards. Awesome. Well, I did not expect it to uh, show up running in reverse, but I'll take it. Let's go ahead and see if I can jump in here. Oh, I can't. Hmm. Oh, there we go. I just needed to wait for it to stop. Let's go ahead and back this up. We'll load it front to back here since I do have to drive it off the other side of the map. And we'll start with our uh, canola, I guess, because uh, we're uh, there. Might as well load it all up. That's the most valuable crop that we've got. I'm thinking we'll get it all into one train car. I'm not sure yet though, so let's see what happens. There we go. 70%, not too bad. Go ahead and close up this car. Let me see if we can open the next one and we'll put all the wheat into here. We went the wrong way, folks. Click, 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 click. This thing holds all kinds of stuff. Oh, there it was. And we should have actually right about the same amount of wheat as we did canola, if I'm not mistaken. A little bit less. Oh, quite a bit less, it looks like. All right, well, we've got it all loaded up. Let's go ahead and get the train sent. Get, let these poor cars move about their business. And I'm going to go ahead and run this off the end of the map here. And hopefully we're going to get a fair amount of money for this. If I pop this back open, it looks like... Well, I can't even see the values because we took it out of the silo now, so we'll just have to wait until we pay things off here. $232,000, and I always forget about that environmental score reward. So, 260k total. 
got rid of all of the debt we've incurred and we've got two hundred and fourteen thousand dollars sitting in the uh, bank account here not too shabby at all now the one thing that i've been thinking a lot about is whether or not we want to buy out any of the leases we have just to make sure we're not uh, spending more money than we need to um if i were to purchase this this is down to 54k what did that cost uh originally to buy is the question uh fertilizer spreaders only 65k so we're probably better off letting that uh, add up a bit here as we uh, continue with the least to own mod uh there's other things we can spend our money on land maybe even in the spring here so I don't know, we'll figure it out, but uh, that's been a, a good episode for today. I think we've got uh, half of our crops sold off here. We've got a little bit more selling to do in the summer. Man, I can't wait to uh, try and pull things out of this bag that we modified, and we'll see how things go. Next episode, though, we'll be jumping into spring with uh, some planting, get the crops drilled in here, and see where we go from there. That's all for today. Kedrick, out.